Hi everyone, this is Nathan from theebookreader.com. For this review, I'm going to do a comparison of the Nook Touch and the Kobo Touch. So they're both very similar actually. They both have the same 6 inch screen, same pearl screen. They both have the infrared touch. So a lot of things are the same with them. They both have micro SD card slots and they both support Adobe DRM, EPUB and PDF ebooks. So the kind of difference here, this is the home screen for each of them. The Nook lists some um, books down here at BNN for purchase and then you've got your latest red book there and your library. So the Kobo is set up a little differently. It shows your five latest red books here and then you can access your library by going up here as well as the store and some other features. This is like the settings and help and refresh down here. So going to the library, both of them have some different layout settings. The Nook has two where it has the list and it has the book covers. And then the Kobo has three different options. It has just the list and then it has the cover option and then just the single cover option as well. Okay, so they both, uh, they're both they both pretty quick obviously when you do that. Um, one thing that the Nook offers is if you double tap, you get the info on the, the book. You can read the reviews, the related titles, you can lend them. Um, and you've also got the option to archive. If it's uh, one of your side loaded books you can you can't delete them. They don't have any delete options on the Nook, so you have to plug it into your computer. It's kind of annoying. Whereas the Kobo, if you want to delete something, you just come right here and you got the delete book option right there. And you've also got some other options. So they both scroll through their library like this. You got the little button down there, and the Nook's got the arrow right there. So, okay, let's go ahead and I'll show you a book. So I'll load up this one. Um, I want to use one of the Kobo books. Okay, so let me use this one. So this is a Kobo book. Okay, so they both have, they're, they're very different. This this is where they come, a lot of differences. So the Nook has, it has some text options in here. You've got line spacing adjustments and you've got margin adjustments. So you've got single space, double space, and 1.5 space for lines. And then the, the margins adjust the size of the spacing on the edge of the screen. And it's also got this setting for publisher defaults, so you can just uh, turn that off if you want to go with the publisher's defaults. And then the Nook has all these different um, font settings over here, these font types. There's six different ones. So the Kobo, it's uh, kind of lacking in this department. You have two font types. you got Georgia and Avner or Avner or whatever. Um, and then you have, um, actually the Kobo has a whole bunch of font sizes. I tested them once and there was 17. So this definitely has a ton of font sizes and the Nook has, um, what, seven? Um, so that's one subtle difference, but um, when you come to this layout, this is what, um, I mean it differs for the book that you have loaded onto here, but um, Barnes & Noble's books seem to be a little bit more towards, they have, um, see they have hyphenation, um, and if I increase the font size, the hyphenation will change for different words, it won't be the same word. So the Nook has hyphenations where the Kobo doesn't, it's more set up it seems like for um, you know, uh, left justification like this. I mean, it differs with each different book that you load, but for the most ones from Kobo I've seen have the justification to the left. So with the Kobo, if you hold down on a word, you'll get the option to save your highlight and uh, dictionary. Um, with the Nook, if you hold down on a word, you will get that same options, and you also get the options to add notes with the virtual keyboard, and you can share passages on social networks. Um, using that button right there. So it has a couple of extra features. Now these features don't work on the Kobo on side loaded ebooks. They only work with the Kobo ebooks. So another difference with the Nook is it has these side page buttons right here. They're built into the frame. So there's top and bottom buttons right here. And you can set which ones you want to um, change pages. So the Nook, it only refreshes once every six page. See, it did it right there. Once you turn six pages, it'll do the full page refresh. So the Kobo has a similar deal with that but it um, has a setting in here where you can change it to go every one to six pages. So if you don't like the um, ghosting, see there's a little bit of ghosting right here, I don't know if it shows up. Sometimes you get ghosting if you don't have the full page refresh. So that's something you can turn off with the Kobo. And then it has the table of contents and a few other options in here. In the Nook, when you bring this option up, you've got the table of contents down there and the go-to slider um, where you can enter a page or that. And then the Kobo has this option down here where um, you can jump to a page by using the slider or you can jump to chapters by using these arrows. Okay, now let me load up the same book on each of these just to show you some differences. Um, so this is a DRM'd ebook. 
they're the exact same book. I got this from Kobo and then I put it on the Nook because the Nook supports the Adobe DRM too. So that's one thing, the Nook, um, you can load other books onto it like Kobo books and stuff like that. Um, the thing with the Kobo is you can't load, you can load other books on it too, but you can't load Nook books. Barnes & Noble has their own DRM so you won't be able to use the Barnes & Noble's eBooks. So this is the same book on both of them. As you can see how the Nook, it has a different layout. Um, it doesn't do these spaces in between paragraphs where the Kobo does that by seems to do that a lot by default and has the, high, the the wider spacing which isn't adjustable yet I think they will be adding that with a firmware update but as of now you have just the wide spacing so that's just kind of a difference so like I said it's the exact same book and then the Nook you have the options with the advanced layout setting so some it, it shows you uh, different options here but um, you can turn it off, publisher defaults too, so it's all just seems to be pretty much the same with this particular book. Okay, one of the, the other main difference with the Nook is that it runs Android, so you can actually hack it and run different applications on here. Uh, I'll be doing a different review for rooting the Nook and how to put applications on here, such as the Kindle app and some other apps. So the, the Nook has this hidden web browser if you come in here and go to search so if you just type in like a um, a URL google.com it will launch the web browser so the Kobo has a web browser built in right here as well if you go to settings um, wireless connection and then launch browser uh, the Kobo has the, the browser works better on the Kobo right now. The Nook, it's like I said, it was hidden, so it doesn't um, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't work as well. Obviously, it's got some issues with it still. Let me go back here. Let's try this one more time. Google. Dot com. So the Nook's browser, since it's based on Android, it has more features. The Kobo browser uh, doesn't have a lot of features, but it seems to work okay. You've got the pop-up keyboard um, to change the URLs. And then you've got the favorite list. I've tried downloading some books, like I said in the main review. I can download books from Feedbooks and stuff, and then they'll load onto the Kobo. Um, with the Nook, you uh, can't really do a whole lot um, as far as downloading. The downloads work, but they don't show up. See, it's got some more advanced options in here. You've got some. Uh, you got the different windows, and then there are some advanced options in here because it's just based on the Android browser, but. Uh, it doesn't work all that great. The Kobo one, you scroll around like this, and it seems to work pretty well. The one thing with the Kobo is sometimes getting hyperlinks to work don't doesn't always work, but uh, it seems to work sometimes. And so the Nooks, it's a little bit more, um, a, a little more takes more patience to use because it uh, isn't uh, set up yet. I think they'll be updating that too to add some more features to it so that it's a little more usable. But uh, right now the Kobo definitely gets the edge in the browser department. The Kobo also has a hidden game here. If you go to the about and about touch and then you go scroll all the way to the last page you got uh, a game in here so that's something that the Nook doesn't have either so the Nook wins um, in the fact that the uh, has more format or uh, more layout settings like uh, I was showing you with the books you've got more options to lay stuff out another thing that the Nook wins is the library um, when you're shopping it's got a little bit better of uh, a layout here let me show you first off you can actually download newspapers and magazines right to it uh, the Kobo, it doesn't have that option for some reason. You have to actually go to the Kobo store. So if you go to the storefront here, it doesn't have the newspaper section for whatever reason. You have to do that on your computer right at this moment. So what I like about the Nook uh, ebook store is if you tap on something, you get the option. You've got the overview right here, um, and then you've got the reviews, and then related titles. Kind of like on the home screen where you can view this different options here. And then you can write reviews as well. So the Kobo's, it's kind of long, kind of got stuck here. It doesn't have the option to read the reviews or write reviews. It shows what the reviews are, but it doesn't have the all the advanced settings. Um, actually, the Nooks isn't loading very well here, but usually it does. So like I said with the Kobo's, you just have the synopsis right here. You can get the preview. So the Nook has that too, where you can download the sample, where you usually get like the first chapter or so right there by the sample. So it's kind of a similar deal right there. Okay, other than that, the two devices, obviously, they've got a lot in common. So the subtle differences come down to um, which one you're going to go with. The Kobo it does support some additional formats like Mobi, um, CBR, and CBZ, but the Mobi files I haven't had any really luck with. The other ones work well. 
So the, the Kobo definitely wins in PDF support. It's got landscape mode for PDFs. It's got zoom for PDFs. I'm not going to go into any more details because it's getting really long, this video right now. But uh, check out the written reviews. I've got some more info on these for the written reviews. And I'm also going to put a comparison review with all the details um, covering more in depth. So thank you uh, for watching this video. I'm going to wrap it up right here.